I'm sure during your time learning about integral calculus, you've probably seen a problem that says something like, evaluate the integral using integration by parts with the given choice of u and dv. Well, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you exactly how to solve a problem like this. Specifically, we're gonna be integrating the function theta times cosine theta d theta. And we're gonna be doing it using the integration by parts formula, which is one of the formulas on my integral calculus cheat sheet. If you wanna check that out for yourself, it is available for instant download and the link is down in the description below. But this is a common type of problem that you're likely to run into again. So I wanted to show you how to solve this kind of problem. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on into the example. And by the end of this video, you should be a lot more comfortable with integration my parts problems. So we're going to evaluate this integral using integration by parts with the indicated choices of u and dv. So in the example, the textbook where this example came from, um, it does actually give this integral that we're going to be solving. So the theta times cosine theta d theta. And then it actually tells us right next to there, and I, I know I didn't write it here yet, but it actually tells us in this case, we're gonna use u equals theta and dv equals cosine theta. And technically you do actually want the d theta on there as well. So um, just in general, kind of a quick note about these integration by parts problems, you know, really, what you're going to be doing as you do these types of problems is applying the integration by parts formula, first of all. So we'll get to that formula in just a second. But the first step in using that formula is determining which piece of your function is going to be your u and which piece is going to be your dv. You know, in this case, it's been given to us. So that obviously makes things a lot easier. But in general, when I'm trying to think about how to choose your u versus your dv, a good rule of thumb is you want to pick your u to be whichever thing is going to be easier to take the derivative of and your dv to be whichever thing is going to be easier to take the integral of. So this is a good example of that because in this case, they told us to do u equals theta. Well, if we think about the derivative versus the antiderivative of theta, and keep in mind, since we do have a d theta here, that's telling us that theta is our variable. So therefore, the derivative of theta with respect to theta is just one. Well, that's much easier than the antiderivative of theta, which would be one half theta squared. So one half theta squared would be the antiderivative, and then one is the derivative. So one, you know, really either of those wasn't necessarily easier or harder to find, the derivative versus the antiderivative, but the derivative of theta is much simpler. It's going to be easier to work with on the next step. So another thing to kind of point out as well, in this case, the other function that we're trying to decide is uh, cosine of theta. Well, usually if you have a trig function like cosine or sine, uh, it's not really going to be easier or harder to take the derivative versus the antiderivative, right? The derivative versus the antiderivative of sine is just positive or negative cosine and vice versa as well. The, the derivative or the antiderivative of cosine is just positive or negative sine. So it's not really going to make a difference. So in this case, since this being, since theta being the thing that we want to take the derivative of and the other term not really making a difference, that's what we want to go with. So the next step in applying these integration by parts problems is to apply the formula. So let's start with that formula. Like I said, this formula is actually uh, one of the formulas on my integral calculus cheat sheet. There's a link down in the description or the pinned comment where you can get yourself a copy of that. Um, but the formula just says that if we're taking the integral of u times dv, that integral is going to be u times v minus the integral of v times du. You know, in this case, we've already been given what our u and our dv are. Normally, when you're doing an integration by parts problem, that's going to be the first thing that you want to figure out. That's going to be kind of the first step. In this case, since we already have that, the next step is going to be to figure out the du and the v, which to do that, all you have to do to find the, the du is just take the derivative of u. So like I already said, the derivative of theta with respect to theta, we know it's with respect to theta because we were given d theta at the end of our integral. This d theta is really just an indicator of what our variable is in this problem. So in this case, d theta tells us it's theta. The derivative of theta is just one. It's not like implicit differentiation where you have to, you know, think about what variable you're taking the derivative with respect to or anything like that. It's, um, you know, in this case, we only have thetas. The d theta tells us that's our variable. So that's 
convenient. So then we have to, and then also here, actually you wanna put um, a D theta on here. So basically you're gonna put a D theta along with your DU and your DV term. Again, they're just kind of indicators to tell you what your variable is in that um, specific little piece, basically. Um, if this said DX, we would put a DX here and a DX here. Since it's D theta, we're gonna go D theta, D theta. So then to find our V, what we need to do is take the antiderivative of our DV. Um, and in this case, the, you know, when we take the antiderivative of this, the D theta tells us that we're integrating with respect to theta. The D theta is gonna fall off when we take the integral and get our V term. So the antiderivative of cosine is gonna be a uh, positive sign. So the antiderivative of cosine theta is sine theta because the derivative of sine theta is positive cosine theta. Okay, so now once you've figured out your u, your v, your du, your dv, once you have these four pieces, the next step is just to plug these four things into this formula. So basically what we were given, what we started with was our u. So this was our u and then this was our dv. So now what we're doing is we're converting the integral of u times dv, which we have here and here, into u times v minus the integral of v times du. So now we just use this kind of conversion with these four pieces here to figure out, you know, essentially what this is going to give us is another integral, a different integral, which should be easier to actually find. So u times v is going to be theta times sine theta minus the integral of v times du. So minus the integral of one d theta times sine theta, which is just the same as sine theta d theta. So now notice, even though we still have an integral here that we have to find, what we just did was we converted having to find the integral of theta times cosine theta into just having to find the integral of sine theta, right? We don't have to actually integrate this stuff out here anymore. So these pieces have been kind of removed from the integration process. They've been accounted for, basically. So now to actually figure out what this is equal to, this sine theta, sine, I'm sorry, this theta times sine theta is just going to remain out here. And then we just have to integrate sine theta. Well, the integral of sine theta is negative cosine theta. And then keep in mind, we did still have this minus sign out here. So now this minus sign is going to cancel with that minus sign. And we're just going to get theta sine theta plus cosine theta. So now we know that theta sine theta plus cosine theta is the antiderivative of theta times cosine theta by using the integration by parts formula. Well, I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button down below. Hit the subscribe button and the bell icon while you're down there too. So you're notified of all my new videos and when I'm going live. I've been doing a weekly live stream every Monday night at five o'clock Pacific. So be sure to subscribe so you can be notified when I'm going live each week. If you want to keep learning about integrals, I have made several videos about those. Just go ahead and click on one of those over there and I'll see you next time. Thanks.